Hello, church. Thank you for joining me today. We're in this series, Why Pray? And today we're looking at prayer as a way of life. This is a great way of ending our series, uh, of thinking about how we, could, how we could grow in praying. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. So now that is the goal, to, to, to develop that prayer life, that communication with God constantly. At one point in my life, in the past, I asked, how do I start a prayer life? Now, honestly, between you and me, I used to think prayer was a chore. And for years, I struggled with praying. It's either I fell asleep while praying, give me an amen out there, or my mind wandered. A few times when I was starting to pray, getting to know prayer, it felt like my there was a wall around my heart. Even though the scripture tells me to be patient in trouble and keep on praying, I felt I wasn't getting anywhere really fast. So looking back, I've noticed a drastic change in my prayer life. I have improved. Now, of course, it didn't just happen overnight. I had to ask for grace to pray, put the work in, and trust God's spirit to lead and teach me. So here are some steps that I took in my prayer life. And my prayer for you is, is that it will help start your prayer lifestyle too. First off, let's define prayer and, and, and the importance of prayer. So what is prayer? Simply put, prayer is daily communication with your Father. Just how we talk to people around us, we tell them things, we ask them for advice, that's how prayer is. The only difference is we don't see God physically, but He is here. He's ever present. This means you could talk to God anyway. When it comes to your Heavenly Father, you are not a stranger. So don't hesitate to start a conversation with Him, especially when it's on your heart. Pray it out. Prayer is important to your spiritual growth. One of the first steps towards spiritual grow, growth, growing in the Lord, is praying. Praying helps you build a closer relationship with God. It gets answers to your questions. It's a place where you place your request to, in front of God. You commit others to God, and on and on it goes through prayer. Now, the place of prayer in, in the life of a believer cannot be ignored. Jesus was a perfect example of a praying man. Luke chapter 5, verse 16. But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. One day soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. Jesus would spend the night praying, and his prayers had results. The next day, boom, results. We know the importance of prayer. We really do. This brings to a question as we're thinking through this. How do I start a praying lifestyle? So first, know who you are praying to. Has this ever happened to you? You, you don't know someone, but you've heard about them and it makes you not like them right off the bat. You haven't even met them, but you don't like them. You may not even want to have a conversation with them to be in their proximity. Now that can happen with how you feel about God. For some, God is this big angry guy who is always ready to pounce on us, <laughs> making life miserable for the mistakes that we made. On the contrary, God is a loving father one who desires to draw closer to his children. Psalm 86, 15. But you, O Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Knowing this about God, it will enable you to see him in a different light. You won't hesitate to start a conversation with him because you know he is always available to listen to you. The first step towards starting a prayer life, one you will be consistent with, is to know the one you are praying to. Then be intentional. Do you seriously want to start a prayer life? 
then be intentional. Intentionality is being deliberate about prayer. It includes making the intentional decision to start where you are and remain consistent regardless of the difficulties. And there will be difficulties in prayer. There will be. It also means putting in the effort to prepare yourself by asking God for the grace to pray, gaining knowledge about prayer, picking out the time you are most alert, having a routine to follow, and the willingness and openness to be led by the Holy Spirit. Even though it, it sounds like a lot already to get started, but then also keep it simple and real. Keeping it simple means avoiding big grammar and rep repetition of words that don't really make any sense. Matthew chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them. For your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. Just keep it simple. Pray what you're feeling. God's a big God. If you're angry at Him, tell Him. He's a big God. Keeping it real means being honest. God can see through our fake facades, so there's no need for one. He knows you. With God, you could be vulnerable. You can voice your fears and even your doubts. Unlike humans that are quick to judge and make fun of others' weaknesses, God doesn't. In fact, in being honest, we acknowledge that we are truly weak and need His strength. We acknowledge that He is our source and sustainer. Paul talks about his praying for healing for himself in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 and 9. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Wow, <laughs> that honesty in prayer, prayer life. So know who you are praying to, be intentional. Keep it simple and real and start small, but keep it going. I think deep down inside, we all want to be able to pray for hours and hours, have that communion with God. But you know that those who pray longer than 30 minutes at a time, they didn't start out like that. They all started small and you too can start small. You could start with one, three, five minutes. Just have a conversation with God. Then slowly but gradually you progress to 10, 15 minutes. And before you know it, you are praying for an hour. And it's that constant communication with God. I saw a quote that read, I don't pray for more than five minutes, but I don't go for more than five minutes without praying. This simply means consistency is better than duration. It's not how long you pray, but how often you pray. So start small and be consistent. And then also pray the scriptures. Maybe the reason why you shy away from prayer and find it challenging to start a prayer life is that you simply just can't find the right words. This is where praying scripture comes in. There are 66 books in the Bible, and each book contains prayers. You just have to read your Bible and jot down the prayers that, that you read that touch you. Or go, do a Google search, it, scriptural prayers, prayers in the Bible. So as we're thinking about our prayer lifestyle, where does it begin? Know who you're praying to, be intentional, keep it simple and real, keep it simple but keep going, pray the scriptures, and practice prayer journaling. Now, prayer journaling is simply writing down your prayers in a little book, in a notebook. This is most helpful if you're the type of person that expresses themselves better in writing. I'm not this way, it's a chore to do this. 
But also journaling helped me and will help you stay focused and avoid distracting thoughts. Now, the beautiful part of this prayer journaling is that you could also go back and see God's goodness, especially when those prayers have been answered. So then finally, it all, to add to our list, pray for others and with others. What happens when you put a dry stick next to another in the fire? The stick that you just put in catches fire and, that, and it just starts blazing and blazing. Basically, that's what happens when you are around people that pray. If you're finding it challenging to start a prayer life on your own, you could pray with someone who has one. This will help you get started until you could stand on your own. So start, be around people and pray. First Timothy chapter two, verse one. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Create a prayer plan where you pray for other people. They could be your family, friends, co-workers, random strangers, who you, whoever, people. What this does is that it enables you to keep praying consistently. You could start by DIYing a, a, a prayer jar with names of people you want to pray for each day. You just pick one and then you do your very best to pray for them during the day and you just fill that jar up with people, names, people that you want to want to pray for. So let's review our list one more time. How to develop a, a prayer lifestyle. Know who you are praying to. Be intentional. Keep it simple and real. Keep going. Pray the scriptures. Start a prayer journal. Pray with other people and pray for other people. And then with all of that, is there a right format to pray? I'll just say it right here and plainly, there, there's really no rules when it comes to us holding a conversation with our Father. The closest the Bible comes to giving us a pattern for prayer is the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Please note and really understand this, that the Lord's Prayer is an example of the things that should go into prayer. A worship, trust in God, requests, laying our, our needs before Him, confession, submitting to the Lord, we are to pray for the things the Lord's Prayer talks about, using our own words and customizing it to our own journey with God. So the proper way to pray is to express our hearts to God. His desire is for prayer to be real and personal. He wants that connection between himself and us. Prayer as a way of life continually pray. It's my prayer that you grow and excel in your prayer life. Don't be too hard on yourself and don't compare your prayer with others and that can only lead to discouragement. Don't do it. Just stay focused on your walk, daily asking the Holy Spirit to enable you to pray and help you improve. God hears your prayer and he will answer.